Dr. Nagy, you've been listening to my conversations with Yvonne and Kyle, and we've talked about a list of different cures, miracle cures, and claims, teas, herbs, salts, uh, heat technology, toothpaste, dietary supplements, fake pills, vaccines, fake diagnostic tests, hydrogen peroxide, creams, lotions, powders, potions, lozenges, tinctures, essential oils, uh, colloidal silver, silver soul liquid, silver spray, antiviral misting spray, nasal sprays, cannabis products, the Trinity Remedy Mix, vitamin C, potassium, thiocyanate, all of these sort of things. And I'm really curious what you have to say about this. Is there a cure? We don't even have a vaccine, let alone a cure for this, do we? Thank you, Dr. Phil, for having me. And I, I, what I want to emphasize, I think this highlights just how scared people are. This is a novel virus. So with novel viruses, we don't have vaccines. We don't have medical therapies or antivirals to prevent the infection or to treat the infection. Well, doctor, what do you think about Kyle's claim? I, I, I told him that I did not believe that he had any clinical studies. I did not believe that CBD had been demonstrated as a miracle cure for coronavirus, certainly not, uh, or COVID-19, and certainly not a miracle cure or even having any demonstration to affect it at all. And he had these ads up that it would crush the coronavirus or COVID-19. I'm telling him, I don't believe he has any basis for saying that whatsoever. Am I wrong? Is he right? What do you think about his claim that this is a miracle cure? I mean, no, Dr. Phil, you're not wrong. And, and look, I can see that, that, that he is very passionate about CBD. And I think, I think that's actually great. He wants to help people. But the reality is, is that at this point in time, while there may be evidence for a drug to work in one disease state, it does not mean that that translates into another disease state, in particular an infection. So at this point in time, we simply don't have the data to say or safe trials to suggest that there is an actual benefit in a patient with this infection or the severe immune response that we see associated with the infection. Well, do you believe that, that, that CBD is not a cure-all, of course, and isn't it true that, in fact, in some infections, CBD has a biological plausibility for harm? So yes, you know, there are multiple in vitro studies with CBD. Some of those in vitro studies can suggest that it can in fact prevent what we call persistence of viral infection. But in fact, if you look at other viral infections, again, in vitro means that we're talking about in a Petri dish or in a test tube, which does not necessarily translate into humans. But in fact, there is evidence that in some cases, CBD can increase the risk of developing an infection in the setting of exposure to a virus. I think that is a good example of why these sorts of things need to be studied in well-controlled trials to make sure that we're not giving a bad recommendation to a desperate patient or even a desperate clinical provider who wants to take care of their patient. Kyle, what do you say to Dr. Nagy? Um, Dr. Well, Nagy, I, I'm sorry. I would just question, you know, what are these other medications uh, designed to do? You know, I, I never understood why I was been given the medications I've ever been given. Uh, and now I understand uh, why those didn't work for me. I understand <clears throat> that the endogenous cannabinoid system is the number one regulatory system in the human body. And so why would not CBD allow for it to improve the immune system's function as these human functions that are in everybody uh, exist? So I'm happy to respond to that. Um, so I think the issue is CBD is a molecule. It's a chemical like many chemicals. And while there may be effects with the immune system, there can also be off effects that are that can also have detrimental effects somewhere else in the body. And I think when it comes to a viral infection, we simply don't know what role that could play. And it just that that is why study is so important to ensure that we understand the balance of risk and, and you know benefit. Um, and to do that in the right pop patient population so that we can help guide them um, through their disease course. 